Good morning. It's wonderful to be here with you on this last Sunday of 2020 to worship the Lord together. As I say that, many people probably are are cheering because they, this is the last Sunday of 2020. It's almost over. This year has been an unprecedented year of pandemic and death and all kinds of terrible things. But as I say that, this has also been a year in which God has been glorified. People have been saved. Families have even been brought closer together because of the things we've had to endure. As we sit here, as a church, as the people of God, we also know that God has been with us throughout every part of this year. He's so good. He's so great. He's so mighty. And he has covered us with his love, his grace, and his power. This morning, we're going to be looking at how Jesus changes things. Now he even changes bad situations so that he will be glorified and will be brought closer to him. You know, when Jesus came into the world, he changed things. Our Lord Jesus was born so long ago in Bethlehem in a little stable, born to the Virgin Mary. As he was born on that blessed night, uh, he came into this world bringing a message of hope to all people. He is the Savior, and he can be our Savior today. As we look into this this great fact of him coming into the world and, and making a difference through his great power and his great love, we're reminded of his ministry here on earth. When Jesus came, he touched people. He touched people with his great power and his great love. In Matthew chapter 4, in verses 23 through 25, Jesus' earthly ministry was described. Listen to what it says here. When Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and the people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering from pain and demon possession, those having seizures, and those who were paralyzed. And he healed them, large crowds from Galilee and Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and the region across the Jordan followed him. You know, as you hear that, you hear Jesus healing people. Our Lord is the same Lord that he was then as he is today. Our Lord still reaches out and he makes a difference in the lives of every person that he comes into contact with by touching them with his great power and his great love. You see, people go through hard times. Nations go through hard times. Governments go through hard times. But as we go through those hard times, we can trust in Almighty God, knowing that Jesus is in control and he's going to bring us through. And today we're going to learn more about that as we study in the book of Matthew together. Let's bow together and let's pray. Father, I come before you right now and I thank you for each and every person who is watching Lord, I ask your blessings to be upon them. Lord, we ask you to give us a better year this year than we had last year. Father, I ask you just to bring healing to people's bodies, encouragement to people's souls, and Lord, strength to our spiritual walk with you. Lord, help us to trust in you. Lord, help us to know that you are in control 
And you can and will make a difference in our lives and in the lives of others if we will only let you. It's in the name of Jesus I do pray. Amen. Today as we begin to look into the Word of God, we're going to see that our Lord and our Savior changed the life of the disciples. Think for just a moment. Uh, Jesus had been ministering in the region of Galilee and he had been about to begin his earthly ministry. He goes down and he visits his second cousin, John the Baptist, and as he finds John the Baptist at the Jordan River, Jesus uh, walks up and John says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away all the sins of the world. Jesus heard those words and the people that were around him heard those words. And he walked down into the Jordan River as he was standing there face to face with, with John. John said, what are you doing, Lord? You need to baptize me and you come to me to be baptized? And Jesus said, let this be now so that all righteousness may be fulfilled. John listened to his words. He bapt then he baptizes Jesus. He takes him and he eases him down into the, to the Jordan River, into that pool. And as he brings him up, there is a voice that is heard from heaven that says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. As those words are spoken, Jesus rises up out of the pool. He walks out into the wilderness and he stays there for 40 days and for 40 nights. And during that time, he neither eats nor drinks. At the end of that time, the devil comes to him and tries to tempt him by misusing his power. He tempts him to, to uh, make some stones into bread. He tempts him to go up onto the pinnacle of the temple and risk his life. He, he does all of these things, and, and Jesus combats the devil with the word of Almighty God. Every time the devil would come to him, he would, and tempt him, Jesus would say, thus it is written, thus it is written, thus it is written. And as he spoke those words, the devil had no, no defense against what Jesus was saying, and he left him. And Jesus was left there all alone, and then the angels came to him and ministered to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At that point, Jesus begins his earthly ministry. He starts to go throughout all of the region of Galilee. And as he goes, he preaches the good news of the kingdom. And he looks for individuals to follow him. Some of the first people that he came into contact with are mentioned in Matthew chapter, chapter 4 and verses 18 and following. It talks about some of the first, the disciples. Listen to what it says. As Jesus was walking beside the, the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. And they were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said. I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets, and they followed him. Now, these were the first disciples that Jesus ever called here on earth. Here he is walking beside the shore of the Sea of Galilee and he looks out and he sees Peter and Andrew, his brother, and they're just simple fishermen. They're, they're men who make their living by the sweat of their brow. They're, they're, um, they're just individuals like you and I. And Jesus calls out to them and he says, look, uh, 
come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. What he's telling Peter and Andrew is this, I'm about to change your life. You see, as Jesus called Peter and Andrew, Jesus knew everything about them. He knew the temper. He knew that Andrew was the little brother who would make Peter mad from time to time. You ever, you ever been there? <laughs> he knew that they were just regular individuals who had been fishing on the, on the Sea of Galilee all of their life. They weren't priests. They weren't uh, rich. But they were men who God was going to use. He knew everything about them. He knew who they were, as I've already said, but he also knew what they were going to do. He knew that these individuals were going to, to come and follow him, that they were going to turn the very world that they lived in upside down through the great power and the great love of Jesus Christ. My friends, this morning, I want you to know that Jesus wants to change your world. He wants to change your life. And as he, uh, as he comes into contact with you, he knows everything about you. He knows, uh, as the Word of God says, the number of hair that's on your head. He knows everything about your personality all your strengths, all your weaknesses, because he's made you. He knows everything that you've done in your past, and he knows everything that you, you are doing right now and everything that you're going to do in your future. And God loves you, and he has a purpose for your life. Jesus changed the life of the disciples by, first of all, calling them to his service. He called them. Again, listen to what it says in verse 19. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. Notice he doesn't say, come um, and I will follow you. He doesn't say, you will make yourselves into fishermen of, fishermen of men. No, he says, look, I'm going to take you. And I'm going to transform you by my great power. You see, God does great things through us when we yield ourselves to the Lord. When he spoke to, when Jesus spoke to the first disciples there on the shore of the Sea of Galilee that day, he called them away from their old way of life. He says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They'd been fishers of fish for a long time, but now he was going to transform them from being fishers of fish into fishers of men. He had a purpose for them, a new purpose, and Jesus was calling them to that purpose there that day. Jesus has a purpose for your life. He has a call on your life. He loves you with every ounce of his being. He has something great and something wonderful for you to do in this life. You may discount yourself. You may say, hey, I'm nothing. Let me tell you something. That's a lie from the devil. You are everything to God. Jesus loves you so very much that he came into this world to die upon the cross of Calvary to save you of your sins. He came not only to save you, but to, to call you and to use you in a great and mighty way in this world to show other people his love. Jesus is calling you. Jesus has a purpose for you. And all you have to do in order to achieve that purpose here on this earth is to follow him. That's exactly what the disciples did. They, they dropped everything and they followed Jesus Christ. Verse 20, at once they left their nets and they followed him. Have you ever thought about what Peter and Andrew 
were leaving. They left their father. They left their family business. They left their families. They left everything to follow Jesus Christ. There'll be some things in our lives that we have to leave. There'll be some old habits that we'll have to leave. There'll be some old uh, ways of thinking that we'll have to leave. We may even have to leave our mothers and our fathers in order to do what God wants us to do. But as we leave these things, God will use us in such a great and mighty way. So Jesus is calling you and he wants to change your life today just like he changed the life of the disciples. But then I want you to see that Christ begins his ministry. Verse 23 again it says, Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Now, notice what Jesus did. He proclaims the good news of the kingdom to this lost and dying world. The Jews had been looking for a Messiah for hundreds and hundreds of years. They'd been enslaved and they'd been under oppression for hundreds and hundreds of years. And Jesus, as he goes throughout Galilee, as he goes throughout that occupied portion of the Holy Land, he proclaims the good news of the kingdom, that he was there, that he was, that the king was there. Now the Messiah was, was present. Uh, all that they had been looking for at, at is is right there in front of the people and he proclaims that to them so that they would hear the good news. Let me ask you this. Do we proclaim good news today? Or do we try to proclaim our news? The good news is that Jesus came. That Jesus died. That Jesus was resurrected on the third day and that any person who will call upon his name can and will be saved. You see, the world's looking for hope. The world's looking for peace. The world's looking for really love. And the only true source of that love, the only true source of that peace, the only true source of hope that we have is in Jesus Christ. It's not in a vaccine. It's not in a in a administration. It's in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, when we think about the true hope that we have, it can only come from Him. So Jesus begins his ministry and he proclaims the good news and we need to be proclaiming the good news of Jesus to this lost and dying world. Then he heals their diseases. Now, in verse, verse 23, it talks about healing every disease and sickness among the people. And then first, verse 24 says, the news about him spread all over Syria and people brought him all who were ill with various diseases and suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, those paralyzed. He healed them, large crowds from Galilee and, the, and Decapolis and, and Jerusalem and Judea and the region across the Jordan. They all followed him. Now, Jesus, as he begins his earthly ministry. He gives people hope by giving them the good news, but then he gives people peace by healing their bodies and then by saving their souls also. Notice that it, it talks about people who are demon-possessed here, people who don't know God. They are being set free 
from their demons. They're being set free from, from their spiritual oppression. They're being set free from all of the things that are holding them back from being the person that God desperately wants them to be. Today, I want you to know that Christ, Christ did all of that through his great power and his great love. Christ changed the people's lives, and he still does today. Christ gave those people hope, and he will give you hope today if you'll just turn to him. I don't know about you, but in this last Sunday of 2020, I need to hear that there's hope that there's strength and that there is indeed peace for all of us through Jesus Christ. That peace can be yours today if you'll turn to him. God bless you. I pray that this, uh, this week and this year that's coming will be a wonderful year for you. A year in which God will be glorified Lives will be changed and you will see the power of God working in you and through you. God bless you. Karen and I want you to know that we love you all and we look forward to the possibility of, of coming back together next Sunday. We are going to get together with our our deacons and our trustees and we're going to talk more about that this week and we will be giving um, um, giving um, information to you about what's going to happen this this coming uh, coming Sunday, but I just pray that all of you will be blessed and that you'll know that we love you all. But more than that, Christ loves you all. We love you. <laughs>